Hi everybody, it is December 7, 2017. I said in my last video that I was going to be posting a video on these scalar weapons reading into that video just this little short bit. The following seems like science fiction, but scalar beam weapons were invented in 1904 by an American immigrant genius called Nikola Tesla from Yugoslavia. Since he died in 1943, many nations have secretly developed his beam weapons, which now further refined are so powerful that just by satellite, one can make a nuclear-like destruction, earthquake, hurricane, tidal wave, cause instant, instant freezing, killing every living thing instantly over miles, cause intense heat like a burning fireball over a wide area, induce hypnotic mind control over a whole population, read anyone on the planet's mind by remote monitoring, I guess, uh, affect anybody's REM dream sleep, uh, dream sleep by sending in subliminal, subliminal, pictures to the visual cortex, cause hallucinogen drug-like effects, or the symptoms of chemical or biological poisoning, make a disease epidemic by imprinting the disease signature right into the cellular structure, paralyze and or kill everyone instantly in a five-mile radius, Remove something right out of its place in time and space faster than the speed of light without any detectable warning by crossing two or more beams with each other and any target can be aimed at even right through to the opposite side of the earth. I will link below to this article on Tom Bearden's site, Historical Background of Scalar electromagnetic weapons. Tom Bearden is a nuclear engineer, war games analyst, and military tactician with over 26 years experience in air defense systems, tactics and operations, technical intelligence, anti-radiation missile countermeasures, nuclear weapons employment, computerized war games, and military systems requirement. And this is a very interesting read, but what you will get is that they've had these weapons and have been using them for a very long time. I just put in the word fire and there were six, six um, results. But I want to take you to, well, this is interesting. In January 1985, an incident of U.S. Navy dispensed chaff drifting towards San Diego, California, from off coast was associated with significant failures of electrical systems and components in the city. Power was interrupted to as many 60,000 homes, a specialized structure such as a piece of sophisticated chaff will reflect scalar waves of frequencies within its cut bandwidth. If scalar frequencies within the chaff bandwidth were present on the woodpecker carrier grid, the woodpecker was uh, created by the Soviets and the woodpecker is uh, the use of electromagnetic frequencies to cause either uh, weather modification, mind control of populations within a region or one individual or a whole country. But if scalar frequencies within the chaff bandwidth were present on the woodpecker carrier grid above and surrounding San Diego, 
a myriad of reflecting bits of chaff in the moving chaff cloud would produce myriads of random, invisible fireflies of electromagnetic energy kindling at a distance from randomized scalar intraferometry ferometry, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, in a zone surrounding the cloud as these firefly pulses of electromagnetic energy occurred inside components of the electrical system, interference would occur leading to anomalous electrical failures. Hmm. Wow, these weapons. But as I read that, I thought, hmm, fireflies, invisible fireflies of electromagnetic energy kindling. Wonder if they could produce fires that way. But what was the next one? Well, this is also very interesting. Um, and I'm not going to read the whole thing. You can click on the link and, and read it yourself. But they were using these scalar weapons. And a powerful charge was rapidly built up on aircraft structures and the skin of the aircraft. The yellow glow seen by witnesses, the yellow glow on this aircraft, was a corona due to the skin of the aircraft acquiring a high electrical charge. The loss of the engines was probably due to the distant Soviet operator applying a localized endothermic energy extraction beam to the engines. So they can use this scalar technology to extract energy from an area or explode energy into an area. One of the eyewitnesses actually saw the crossed glowing beams form in the clouds and a ball or beam of light then go from that glow and strike the aircraft. Instant fire to the plastics inside the aircraft occurred, emitting deadly gases. Instant fire with the use of scalar weapons. I, I can't say conclusively, definitively, that these fires in California, eight weeks ago, the fires now, are being caused by scalar weapons. But the scalar weapons can also create very intense energy in an area. Winds, wind, high winds. So, when we do have these weapons, and we do know that these events could have been caused by these weapons, we cannot not factor in the use of these weapons, especially since there have been people who have said in the fires caused eight weeks ago, they were seeing these blue beams of light. And here, in latter October and early November 1986, significant giant radial cloud patterns associated with Soviet weather engineering using the scalar electromagnetic interference grid were seen and photographed over California in the greater Los Angeles area. On Monday, November 10, 1986, an anomalous giant fireball was seen by hundreds of persons to move from west to east. It was seen over four states and accompanied very sharp changes in the electromagnetic grid. An anomalous winter storm was in progress with cold air spilling down from Canada. The storm penetrated very deeply southward, breaking cold records 
in a, wa in a wide area of the mid-United States. At the same time, heat records were being broken in Florida and generally throughout the Southeast. Frank Golden verified by direct measurement that the electrogravitational field of the Earth was agitated and most dynamic. In short, significant activity was being introduced by the so Soviet scalar electromagnetic grid. The activity was about half what it is when the Soviets are inducing an earthquake. It is very sad that we do have so many people who just don't even have a curiosity left in them to find out about this technology, the weapons that they have been using. I do want to mention that scalar weapons, the Soviets had begun to introduce uh, technology that could melt metal, melt metal. And in this article, Tom Bearden lays out an awful lot of facts that the Challenger that was brought down was due to the Soviets use of this technology. Anyway, you can click on the link and read all about that. But here, 12 things you should know about scalar weapons. Um, let me put in fire. There is eight here. It can cause intense heat, like a burning fireball, over a wide area. They can bring down missiles by using scalar weapons. If the United States or Russia were to fire a nuclear missile to attack each other, this may possibly not even reach the target because the missile could be destroyed with scalar technology before it even left its place or origin. The knowledge via radio waves that it was about to be fired could be eavesdropped and the target could be destroyed in the bunker fired at from space by satellite. You know, we do have this technology, so when you hear all of this nonsense about North Korea, it is simply propaganda to inst instill fear in a whole lot of the population. It allows governments to increase their funding We've got to protect ourselves from that crazy North Korean dictator. But anybody who could think that North Korea could fire a missile off, reach the United States, do some damage, when we have all of this technology that can be used to stop all of these missiles in their tracks. Well, I don't quite get it, but alternatively, invisible moving barriers and globes made of plasma produced by crossed Schuyler beams could destroy any nuclear missile easily while it moves towards the target and failing all these, it could be destroyed by entering the target's territory by passing through a Tesla shield, which would explode anything entering its airspace. Let me go to a few more uh, 
Um, let's see. Here are the fireballs. More intensely hot Tesla fireball globes could vaporize the missile. Tesla globes could also activate a missile's nuclear warhead en route by creating a violent low order nuclear explosion. A scalar beam can be sent from a transmitter to the target, coupled with another sent from another transmitter, and as they cross, an explosion can be made. You think about all of the people who are hearing booms. They don't know where it's coming from. Well, if you miss a beam, the crossing beams, suddenly you hear this boom. It could very well just be this. Um, Hang on for one sec. And this is also, <laughs> well, rather fantastic, but when you don't understand fully how this technology can be used and what they are doing with it, it is hard to grasp that they could alter time with the use of these scalar waveforms. Time flows like a waveform river in hyperspace in a grid pattern. This consists of interlocking, interlocking great circles, which circle the poles and include a lattice grid of lines that are 30 nautical miles or 55.5 kilometers apart. When scalar beams charge through hyperspace, these rivers of time get blocked and redirected temporarily. This is a covert plan underfoot to change the way time is express, expressed on this planet, altogether using hyperdimensional physics and Tesla technology, Tesla technology by splicing Earth back onto a now defunct Atlantean timeline in which Lucifer hadn't fallen from grace. There are a lot of crazy people on this planet and unfortunately they've got a lot of money. They're in positions of power and they are Satanists. So is it truly so crazy to think that they would be wanting to bring back a timeline in which Lucifer hadn't fallen from grace? <laughs> I, I, look, I can't believe what we are living. I, I am so, uh, Never did I think I would be living to see this day, but we are living it. Our present reality is expressed in the way time runs around the corridors in hyperspace by the pattern it takes. Other timelines exist in a different kind of grid pattern, creating alternative versions of our present. Multiple versions of reality can be manipulated given the right technology and people can enter into parallel universes, do all sorts of things and then enter back into this one. One needs a Tesla zero time reference generator which can lodge a specific reality into the time at the center of the universe in which it stays still acting like an anchor both America and the UK government are able to manipulate and enter into different realities.
the various dimensions each comprise a com complex pattern of interlocking waveforms. Matter has been found to be only one wave of a pulse comprising a positive cycle, while the negative cycle manifests as antimatter. The matter pulse brings something into physical visibility, then it disappears momentarily and returns. But the pulses are so rapid, we don't see something as unmanifest while temporarily dematerializing. Physical time is only measured by the visibility of something's aging process, or in other words, its passage through a journey starting at one measured time reference point to another. Different waveforms only appear to us to be solid because we are comprised of the same matter. If the frequencies governing the time between a matter pulse and an antimatter pulse are shortened or lengthened with technology, time will go faster or slower in the surrounding space or what it affects. Therefore, scalar waves belong to space-time in which antimatter or hyperspace exists. Time can be altered by harnessed and directed, and directed scalar waves, including magnets which give off scalar waves which bend time because they disrupt the pulse of matter and antimatter, and therefore the rate at which something normally passes through time with its usual smoothness. An experiment with scalar waves in USA once caused all the clocks and watches in the test neighborhood to go berserk for four days until the flow of time resettled back to its normal flow and they returned as before. Scalar potentials can be created artificially when focused into a weapon and can do major damage to an object's location in space-time. That which determines the object's natural pulse of matter and antimatter cycle can become stressed when targeted by scalar waves made of artificial potentials because they are almost always absorbed by the nucleus of an atom, not the electrons in orbit. Hyperspace can become warped temporarily, although space-time naturally curves around natural vortexes the Earth has which form chakras to absorb and release universal energies. These are opened and closed in natural cycles according to the positions of the Sun and Moon in relation to Earth. Because scalar waves are finer than gamma waves, they can pass through any physical substance undetected. However, the damage inflicted can be so powerful that they can dislodge any object right out of time and space and cause it to temporarily disappear away from its normal movement in time. All objects move in time, and they will also move in space if a physical external force activates the object's own natural internal scalar waves to point in the direction it is sent to causing it to move from A to B, depending on how much force is used. A beam of scalar energy can cause the time frame the object resides in to get warped, making it disappear into another reality. You can read about how it works by clicking on the link below. But they do have this technology. They are using this technology. And when you read about what they can do in terms of mind control, we are living a time 
that unfortunately it will be very difficult to understand and to be able to come up with any definitive conclusions about anything, the causes of what is taking place, even within our own self. What these weapons can do Um, well, I know that this is just going to be a longer video, but I think that the information is really important. So let me read a little bit more. A Tesla shield protecting a military target could be made of three or more concentric shields that would produce multiple electromagnetic pulse energy and severe heating of anything which enters it. When you think about all of the propaganda coming out of mainstream media, you know, our enemy now is Russia, all of this war talk, it's all lies. And Russia is not our number one enemy again, nor is North Korea. They're all working together to scare ordinary people, their own citizens, into believing that there's an impending war and well, if you understood that we, that the United States and Russia have technology to protect their nations when military targets can be protected instantly with this technology, then people would really understand that what we hear is all fabricated. These concentric Tesla shields can also clean up and sterilize any gamma radiation resulting from an explosion of a nuclear warhead. They can clean up radiation from this technology. Nikola Tesla, even in the 1920s, could create a protective three-dimensional shield or dome formed by two or more transmitters sending widened scalar beams linked together over a target in, an, in a hemisphere shape instead of causing the target to explode, which narrow, more intense cross beams would, a wider, more encompassing beam could form a large plasma shell outside something to be protected. This acted like an electrifying force field shaped like a dome, which could cause anything which entered it to have its technology dudded, inoperative, making incoming aircraft pilots die by destroying their nervous system and or making an incoming missile, aircraft, or tank blow up. Multiple layers could be nested, made of different kinds of plasma, which would ensure nothing could penetrate a protected target's ground space or airspace. The Russians can make a Tesla shield up to 200 miles wide. These large, luminous plasma shields have been witnessed by sailors over the oceans from time to time, as various nations test their scalar weapons in secret. Tesla, as early as the 1920s, created globes or bullets or of plasma with cross 
scalar beam sucking the energy out of the aerospace into a cold explosion, causing it to freeze, or sending extreme heat into it to burn as a very powerful laser beam. These powerful beams can also travel right through the Earth and create an earthquake at the antipodes of the Earth. And Tesla also experimented doing this. Hyperspace flux energy potentials flows as waves in a sea of intense power in the next dimension unharnessed. However, when energy is manufactured artificially, it can be made into different modes, either a pulse mode, energy extraction mode, or explosion mode. If two timed pulses meet, an explosion extraction makes a sharp cooling and all heated energy is extracted out of the air back to the transmitter. This can make everything and everyone frozen. It preserves machines and buildings, but not people. If a burning energy is sent, the target has a nuclear-like detonation because energy emerges to a target destroying the nucleus of the atoms. Multiple scalar wave modes and frequencies can also be blended together into one beam as well. Wow. This technology has been used many times to crash planes or helicopters by using a portable scalar bazooka carried by a hidden terrorist or soldier. The Vietnamese and the Soviets used this technology in the Vietnam War against American aircraft, many planes crashes with inexplicable causes can be traced to this. These Russian-made portable bazookas were also made by the Serbs against American helicopters during the Bosnian War. The Soviets used scalar weapons against the Afghanistans during their war. One may wonder if this explains current American helicopter crashes in Afghanistan and Iraq. Scalar waves can be used for impenetrable communication inside an ordinary carrier wave. Nothing in the air is safe with scalar weapons or anything on the ground because any building can be penetrated and inside and the inside contents destroyed from either narrow or wide cross beams. There is nowhere to hide. They can be sent by aircraft or satellite or even from the government UFOs of Russia, Britain, Australia, and America. Scalar beams against individuals to totally destroy a person's nervous system and kill them instantly. A scalar weapon can be sent on high intensity pulse mode. This will destroy every living cell, bacteria, and all germs so the body falls down like a limp rag, not even decaying in even 30 to 45 days. There is no living aspect left to decay. Entire groups of people can be killed this way, even in a 50 mile radius on peak power. Gwen Towers can do this. They can kill, well, what I read, a military-funded study. The Gwen Towers, those high antennas with wires coming down to the ground, they call it the emergency ground wave system, ground-based frequencies. With a flip of the switch, they could kill everyone instantly within a 40-mile radius. Scalar beams set on a lower power can render a person unconscious to be revived at a later date for interrogation. Crossed scalar beams can cover a whole range of targets from something right through the other side of the earth to anything under the sea or ground. Not even metal will suffice to protect as a metal softening mode can be deployed. Scalar beams can be put into x-ray mode where a screen can show what is inside something, even under the sea or earth or inside buildings. 
and this is called a re remote viewing radar. Anything in the sky can be instantly destroyed, even from one country to another. All one country needs to destroy anything skybound in an enemy's country is to put two or more scalar transmitters forming a scalar waveform interference grid whereby a shield is locked over the country in high intensity mode and this will cause anything which enters it to be destroyed. This can also destroy anything in the sea and detonate mines. The explosion shows up on the screen as a blossoming of the moving light on the square. Russians mainly use this interference grid over the USA to control the weather, moving hot or cold air, where they can meet and create storms, hurricanes, torrential rains, or droughts as they please. Earthquakes can be created along with volcanoes erupting. Moisture can be brought from the ocean and sent over land, and cold air from the north sent south. Violent thunderstorms can be created. Well, I don't know how to get through to our fellow Americans that we really truly are at war. But I think, you know, the use of this technology, that they can mind control the population, that they can um, cause cellular damage and, and induce diseases, and that they can cause terrific brain damage and cognitive difficulty. We are witnessing it. We are experiencing it. It is happening. It's, it's happening right before our face. And everything that we are hearing from our governments and our mainstream medias in our respective countries is just a load of crap. They speak as if we're still, you know, the, these primitive countries with this primitive technology. And yeah, many people are wowed by the internet and wowed by downloading videos and wowed by the iPhones and wowed by everything becoming so small. But what the, the technology we don't know is what they are using. And yeah, it put this in the hands of evil people. And you got, well, a whole lot of destruction happening here on this planet. And we are witnessing it every single day.